Hey, welcome back to the Spectra Creative Channel. As always, I'm here with you, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick, and I get a lot of subjects and a lot of questions about subjects here on Spectra Creative. And one of the subjects that comes up the most in the well, the, the comment section, if you will, is for more information about the toy making process and how toys are made using tools and what other ways could possibly use to replace tools. So as a reminder, a toy tool is this, a giant metal mold that spits out plastic objects. And a lot of the questions that get asked was, can 3D printing replace traditional toy molds? And it's an interesting question, and there's a lot of factors in that. So let's dive in and do a little uh, toy industry production review and see if we could figure out if that can actually happen and if we're there now or not. Well... First off, a quick review again on what toy tools are. They're these giant metal machines or metal molds that get inserted into an injection molding machine. And a toy tool can cost anywhere from ten to $200,000, depending on how big it is. When we did Castle Grayskull in Masters of the Universe Classics, the tooling was almost half a million dollars for something that big. And the tools are placed inside of a giant room-sized machine called an injection molding machine, which injects plastic into the metal molds. Now, on the other hand, a 3D printer is much smaller, and it sort of squirts out or spits out plastic one layer at a time, building your object. And you could technically buy a 3D printer for $150, $200 right now on Amazon. Hey, knock yourself out and do it. So when you have something like a toy tool that costs tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars versus a 3D printer you could buy right now with your weekly paycheck, well, the question is, can we all just start making our own action figures at home and no longer have to pay those, you know, outrageous toy prices? Well, it's not quite as cut and dry as that, and there are a huge advantage to toy tooling that 3D printing can't do. Yes, you could 3D print all the parts to a toy and you could assemble it together and you will get a nice wheeled car or something simplistic like that and you could deco it and put on stickers and, you know, all sorts of things. And you can absolutely tool this and create it in an injection mold machine as well. And you could maybe more or less get the same type of object in the end. So the question is, can... 3D printing replace all tooling, or are there certain categories of tools that work better for the 3D printing process? Well, again, it's not as simple as that. So if you've never seen a 3D printer, it basically goes back and forth, putting one layer of plastic down at a time. A really good 3D printer will cost thousands of dollars, like the Fusion 3 models, which retail for about $5,000, but they're top of the line. And they are made right here in beautiful Greensboro, North Carolina. And they didn't pay me to say this. I just love plugging Greensboro because it's such a fantastic town. All right. So let's look at an example in the real world. Say you are a carnival owner, not the ship, the, the fun place to go with, you know, the, the rides and the prize booths. And you no longer want to pay to have your product made in China. You want to just make your own prizes to give out to kids. Well, sure, is 3D printing just the solution? Can you just set one up in a tent and, you know, have a guy hit the button and just spit out prizes all day? Well, it's not that simple. There have been toy companies that have worked on this. Mattel had their updated Thing Maker, and while it was fun for making sort of colorful objects, it was also a little expensive for at home. And then there were things like Jack Specific's 3D It, which was actually more of wax being poured over a plastic skeleton, not a like skeleton like you see in that picture, but an inner body to create articulation. So it wasn't really 3D printing, it was sort of mock 3D printing for kids. So while there have been toy companies that have looked at this, if you wanted to actually get prizes to give out at said carnival and you wanted to be able to 3D print them, you would need one of those really big machines, like I mentioned earlier, like from Fusion 3. Hey, there's free plug number two. But it's also about speed. And you can't just print out prizes, you know, at a quick uh, click, if you will. Doing something like this Eiffel Tower or, well, really almost anything takes a long amount of time. 
How long does that take to 3D print? Well, there's a lot of factors. It's what material you use, what kind of durability you want to use, and, well, what kind of machine you have. Obviously, the more expensive machines will be able to print quicker, but overall, if you wanted to do something even as simple as, say, this toy boat, right? Say that three times real fast, and you're still going to get something that's going to take a long time to make. In fact, doing a toy boat, toy boat, toy boat is probably going to take you upwards to anywhere from 5 to 12 hours. Because while 3D printing is efficient, it's not very fast. It's going to take essentially a full day, or at least the sun part of the day, or the moon part, let's not knock those vampires out there that want to 3D print, but it's going to take hours and hours versus an injection molding machine, again, depending on how complicated the object is you're making, can spit them out at the hundreds to not thousands to possibly tens of thousands per day. And even if it's something complicated where it has to come out on a tree, it still can mass produce. But what about collector toys, right? Like we're all adult collectors? Well, the thing is the detail work isn't there either. Yes, you could make 3D printed versions of beloved collectible items, whether it's cars or figurines, but the detail work is not going to be as efficient as if you hand sculpted or you injection molded. Plus, it comes out in one color, so you'd have to paint it, and that has to be done by hand. So again, you're down to that slowness of 12 hours per figurine or bust or all the parts needed to assemble a 3D printed DeLorean that won't really have details. All right. So what can you do with 3D printing as far as the toy and collectible industry? Well, games are a great solution. 3D printed chess is actually one of the biggest areas of toys and 3D printing because all of the chess pieces from the pawn to the king, well, maybe the pawn to the queen, eh, the king, they can all be, uh, you know, printed pretty quick, even, well, not quick, but they can be made. You know, it might take 12 hours per piece. And another one interesting to look at is Lego and 3D printing. This is, see, this is actually like a Lego 3D printer. Get it? Like, I know, like someone actually made, anyway, I thought this was funny. So the reason Lego works for 3D printing is, again, you have a basic shape. So you can print out a Lego brick, if you will, and since Lego isn't proprietary, hence Mega Block and all those other type of, you know, Lego compatible pieces, well, you can 3D print your own blocks. And there are people who have 3D printed enough Lego blocks to make some really cool projects. And it's been, you know, lots of fun with, you know, parents and kids to assemble their own things made out of their own Lego blocks. Because Lego, again, is very mass compatible with other lines. You just have to have something with the right nodes and holes. All right. So what can't you do with 3D printing that toy collectors, especially adult collectors, really want. And, well, the short version is moving parts. 3D printing doesn't allow the uh, thickness of the plastic in order to have articulated parts the way you would need for anything from a Spider-Man figure with articulation for you know basic limbs to something uh, more complicated, like an action feature. So, we're really just not there yet, is the bottom line. And it's not to say we won't be, because the human race are dreamers. We've always been dreamers, and we've always been thinking of things that don't exist, and how do we get to those? So we're going to get there one day, and there will be a time when you could just 3D print a Spider-Man action figure from home, whether you're licensing it or not. Well, that's a whole other issue. But the point is, that will come. We are just not there yet, and we're years, if not decades, away and it really is because 3D printing can't do movable parts, and it's just slow. You can't mass produce. So, one of these days, Alice, bang, zoom, straight to the moon. Wow, I never realized the first astronauts were so fat. Keep dreaming. We'll be there one day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll comment back. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to address them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. That's not an astronaut. It's a TV comedian. And he was just using space travel as a metaphor for beating his wife. If you're new to this channel, be sure to check all of the wonderful, amazing toy videos we have, because we answer a lot of questions. Search Spectre Creative on YouTube. You'll learn a ton about the toy industry.